so there are two types of stresses one is normal stress another one is a shear stress now let us see what is normal stress so to define the normal stress let us consider a bar which is subjected to load p on both side of the bar in the opposite direction and let us consider a section ab which cuts the bar into two parts so in the first part the load is acting upward direction and its respective resistance force is acting in the opposite direction that is downward direction in the second half part the load is acting downward direction whereas its resisting force is acting in a upward direction so from the definition of a stress uh, the resistance force applied divided by its unit cross sectional area so here resistance force is r whereas cross section area is a to maintain the equilibrium condition this resistance force should be equals to the applied load therefore stress is equals to p by a now let us see what is the definition of a normal stress so the normal stress is nothing but intensity of resisting force normal to the section or perpendicular to the section is nothing but a normal stress uh, there are two types of a normal stress one is a tensile stress another one is a compressive stress so the tensile stress is nothing but the stress induced due to the application of so two pulling forces in the opposite direction so because of application of this pulling force in the opposite direction the length of the bar will be increases along the direction of the application of the load and the stress that is tensile stress is equals to sigma is equals to p by a next one is compressive stress it is the type of a normal stress so here two pushing forces are acting in the same direction along the axis of the bar so because of application of this pushing force the length of the bar become reduced and its formula is sigma is equals to p by a so here for both tensile and compressive stresses the formula is the same because as per the definition of a stress resisting force per unit area so here the direction is different but resisting force is acting in the opposite direction to the application of the load therefore the formula for both tensile and compressive stress become same now let us consider another type of stress that is a shear stress so here shear stress is nothing but when the body is subjected to two equal and opposite forces tangentially the induced stress is nothing but a shear stress let us consider a element which is subjected to two equal and opposite forces p so due to the application of this two equal and opposite forces tangentially the stress induced in the element which is nothing but a shear stress so to explain the shear stress let us consider the example of a rivet jo riveted joint usually we use a riveted joint to join two sheet metals so this is one sheet first sheet metal this is second sheet metal to join these two sheet metals we use a joint called a rivet so what happens due to the application of two equal and opposite forces so the one load is acting away from it both the forces are acting away from it and opposite direction so due to the application of this force this rivet will shear off so this is r which is nothing but resistance force which is acting opposite to the application of load p and for the bottom sheet the load is acting right side direction and its resisting force is acting left side direction uh, usually we represent the shear stress by greek letter tau the, def the definition as per the definition of shear stress uh, which is nothing but shear force or tangential force divided by its cross sectional area so here shear force is p and its cross sectional area is a therefore tau can be written as tau is equals to p by a now the next concept is a strain so when the body is applied by external force it undergo deformation so here strain is nothing but the measure of deformation produced due to the application of external forces therefore strain is defined as the ratio of change in length 
to the original length. Let us consider a cantilever beam which is applied by a external force tangential force P. So due to the application of this tangential force the original length L before applying the load will change us to delta L. This delta L represent the change in length or increased in length due to the application of this load. So as per the definition of a strain the change in length by original length. So change in length is a delta L whereas the original length is L and it is denoted by a Greek letter epsilon. Therefore linear strain is equals to epsilon is equals to change in length is delta L divided by original length is L. And here one thing important thing in the linear strain is so it is a unitless quantity because the change in length delta L is either in terms of meter or millimeter and original length is also in terms of meter or millimeter both the units will get cancelled therefore it is a unitless quantity. Now let us consider few case studies. So in the first case study uh, it is a, a beam which is subjected to a load P and having the uniform cross section area A. So here capital L represent the original length of the beam and the delta represent the change in length due to the application of load P. So how to calculate the stresses? So the definition of a stress is load by area. So load is P whereas its area is A and the definition of a stress is epsilon is equals to change in length by original length. So the change in length is a delta whereas its original length is L. Next case study is again we are going to consider a different type of a beam having the cross sectional area 2A and the load is we are applying 2P. So how to calculate its stress? So stress is equals to load by area. Load is 2P whereas area is 2A. So 2 to get cancelled therefore stress sigma is equals to P by A. But in case of a strain change in length by original length. So change in length is a delta whereas original length is L. Therefore epsilon is equals to delta by L. In the third case study the area of the beam is capital A whereas the change in length is a 2 delta and the original length is 2L and the load is P. Therefore its stress become sigma is equals to load by area. Load is P whereas area is A. In case of strain epsilon is equals to change in length by original length. Change in length is a 2 delta whereas original length is 2L. Therefore 2 to get cancelled epsilon become delta by L.